Now you might already know about the healing properties of the calendula flower, also known as pot marigold. And that is why today I am going to show you exactly how to use calendula in order to heal your skin. And for those of you that don't know, calendula has very soothing properties. So it's great for when you have tiny cuts, minor burns, or any kind of irritation to the skin. And if you put something with calendula in it on that area, it will help to heal and soothe that area. Now, it does take a little bit of prep work in order to have the calendula ready to use, but I really do think it's worth it because once you have it in your medicine cabinet, it's ready to go and you can use it on demand whenever you need it. Welcome to True Freedom Permaculture, where I show you all the tips and tricks you need to have a green thumb, even if you weren't born with one. So today I'm going to take you through the entire process and it first starts with me picking the calendula flowers and so for that we need to head out to my garden. So come along with me. So here we are in my calendula bed and I'm really glad I have an assortment of flowers in varying stages to show to you today. So here's what to look for and this is after the morning dew has dried but it's not too late in the day which is the perfect time to be picking things like this and herbs. But so here is a calendula flower really in the perfect stage here. And you could use a pair of garden shears in order to take this off. You want to get it as close to the flower head as possible. But honestly, I just use like my thumbnail and one of my fingers and just kind of pinch it off like that. So you can see it that there. And then I will just put that in my basket. And I will show you also what you're not looking for. So what you're not looking for, these are, so this is like kind of a spent flower head. And you can tell because the color is fading. It's not as vibrant as the one I just picked. Let me get another one that's a good color. Let's see. This orange one here. Actually, you know what? Let me get a yellow one for a closer comparison, because there's one right over here. So let me put this side by side for you. So do you see the one on the right? This one is much more vibrant than the one on the left. And it's also gonna be more full of resin. And the resin is what really has the healing property. So you want the most resin as possible. And when you pick these flowers, you're gonna feel kind of like the stickiness on your fingers. Well, that's a really good sign because that means that the flower is full of resin. So I just do this every day. And by deadheading these flowers, you're also going to increase flower production. So you really are doing the plant a favor. And as far as the spent ones, if you didn't get to them in time, that's okay. Just let them go to seed and then you can either save the seeds or in this case, I sort of let them self seed for next year. All right, so I've got my basket of calendula flowers here. Let's go ahead and take these inside. Okay, so I have brought my calendula flowers inside and I have some calendula flowers to show you that I've already been drying. Some I just picked yesterday. And in order to do this, I'm actually using, you can see here, it's actually broken, a broken window screen. Uh, any window screen is perfect for this. If you don't have one, just use a clean dish towel, no big deal. And I'm going to let these flower heads dry upside down. And depending on how humid it is, it can take anywhere from a day to a few days for the flower heads to completely dry out. So I'm just gonna take my dried flowers and all I'm gonna do is just pop them on the screen and give them some room so there's good airflow. They're not piled up one on top of the other. They're not touching, just like that. And let me show you some that I've done that I did yesterday. And see, they're starting to dry out, but they still feel very soft. But you can definitely see a major difference. These I just picked, this after one day. But I'll show you when they're done, they're actually going to be crispy. Can you hear that? Yeah, so that's how you know when they're fully dry. So these aren't quite ready. These have been here for a few days. Now it might take you the course of you know, several days, several weeks, in order to accumulate enough calendula flower heads in order to use them how you want to. It depends on how much you're gonna use and what you're gonna do with it. 
Now that we have our dried calendula flowers, we can use them to make calendula tea, which can be quite healing for the quote unquote skin of our intestinal tracts. And you can make an infusion of this by pouring one cup of hot water on one to two teaspoons of dried flowers and just letting that infuse for about 10 to 15 minutes. The tea to me kind of tastes like pumpkin, a very subtle pumpkin flavor, but it also has a slightly bitter quality. So you could try adding a little honey if you find that you're having trouble drinking it. And the tea can also be used as a throat rinse for whenever you have a sore throat. As with anything, please consult with your healthcare provider prior to consuming this, and especially if you're pregnant because it's known to stimulate menstruation. So it may not be the best thing to have if you are pregnant. So the tea is the first way that you can use calendula. Now the second way I'm gonna show you is by making a cold infusion of calendula into oil. So this really doesn't get any simpler. You're just gonna take a glass jar, which I have sterilized the glass jar and my lid. There's various methods for you to do this. You know, you can do it on the stove. I chose to do it in the oven. Just make sure you clean it first and just sterilize them as you would if you're canning something. The whole point of this, use clean hands too when you're doing this, is you wanna prevent mold growth inside. And the mold, if it gets moldy, it's just gonna be ruined and you don't wanna waste all of that oil and all of the calendula flowers that you spent you know, days or weeks accumulating. So we just wanna prevent mold growth whenever possible. So you're just gonna take your sterilized jar and I'm gonna fill it about halfway with my dried calendula flowers. So I'm really gonna pack it in. That's about halfway tightly packed. Okay, wow, I didn't even measure that out, just kind of worked out that way. But I had just enough to fill up my jar halfway. And now you are going to take an oil of your choice and you are going to pour it over the whole thing. And you're gonna fill it to right below the top. And you can use a variety of oils. It depends on how you wanna use it. So I chose olive oil today because I wanna be able to use it in salad dressings or as like a garnish. Um, I just want as many options as possible. For those of you with pets and kids, I feel like the more things that you can make edible, probably the better. But some other things that you could use are sunflower oil, also edible. You could use apricot oil, jojoba, uh, grape seed. Any of these are really good options. So I'm just filling my jar. Okay. We'll fill it all the way up to right below the top so there's less air in there. It's going to look really full but that's a good thing. And the more oil you have too. Now in this case it doesn't look like I need to but if any of your flowers have floated to the top of the jar, you're just gonna take a clean spoon and press them down and make sure that they're fully saturated with oil because if they're exposed to air, if there's any like, you know, happens to be any water left in the flowers, it's going to add to the chances that you're gonna get mold in the jar. So once you have it filled and pressed down if you need to, then go ahead and seal your jar off with your sterilized lid and now Again, to prevent any air bubbles or anything like that, you're just gonna gently shake it a little bit, maybe side to side, up and down. Just making sure that the flowers are fully saturated and there are no air pockets. Okay, so that's it. So I'm going to let this sit in a sunny location Sunny is best because it helps it infuse. I'm actually gonna leave it right over here on this little side table that I have. Normally behind me, I have this window open so it gets plenty of Southern exposure. Um, so let it sit for four weeks. Now, if you don't have a sunny location or it's been kind of cloudy for the most part, you're gonna wanna let it sit for more like six weeks or so. So I'm gonna go ahead, let this sit, and I will check back with you in about a month. Welcome back. It's been about four weeks, a little over four weeks now. So our oil is finally ready. So I'm so excited to be able to strain this off and be able to use this oil from now on. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some sort of vessel. I like to use a 
like pourable measuring cup just because I think it's easier to work with after you strain it off. And then you're going to need some way of filtering the calendula flowers out of the oil. And there's a few different ways you can do this. So you can use, this is like a nut milk bag for those of you that make your own things like almond milks or cashew milks. I think it works really well for this. The weave on it is very fine, so you're not gonna get a lot of large pieces going through. You could also use cheesecloth, or you could even use a coffee filter if you don't have either of those things. So you have options when it comes to that. So all you're going to do is you're going to take whatever you're using to filter out the calendula and just kind of tuck it into the vessel you're gonna be pouring into, like so. And now, after a long wait, you can begin to pour in your beautiful calendula oil. And it's this lovely golden yellow-orange color. And it's been sitting in the sunlight for, like I said, a little over a month now. So it's really had a chance to infuse. Set that aside. So now we'll just take our bag and we're just gonna squeeze every last drop of this oil that you've been waiting so patiently for. And also make sure that you're using clean hands when you do this too, because you've been so careful not to contaminate anything so far that you don't want bacteria on your hands or something like that. Okay, that's pretty good. So now, now my hands are all oily, <laughs> but that's okay. That's the beautiful thing about working with things that you wanna put on your skin anyway, is that you can rub it in, and then when you wash your hands, your skin will be nice and moisturized. I had to go wash my hands because my hands were a little excessively oily, but now that I've washed them, they do feel very soft and supple. So I have my strained off calendula oil here, and what I'm gonna do is no, you could stop here. Before I go any further, you could stop here. You have your calendula oil, and in fact, I am gonna pour some of it off into another glass jar, a clean glass jar, for use in cooking, because remember, we used olive oil, so it is edible. So I'll pour this off and use it for that. Sometimes you do want something that's just purely an oil, and it is really great for your skin, as I mentioned. The thing with using just an oil is that Whenever I use an oil, I feel like I have to wash my hands afterwards or wherever I put the oil because then otherwise I'm afraid I'm gonna like sit down on some furniture or it's gonna touch my clothes and get it all oily. So for use on the skin, I prefer to use it in the form of a salve, which I'm going to show you how to do that now. This is a third way that we can use calendula to help soothe our skin. So first, I'm going to reserve some of the oil because like I mentioned, I do want some of the oil as it is, and I'm just shy of two cups, which makes sense because it was steeping with that dried calendula in a 16 ounce container, and part of that volume was composed of the dried calendula. So that makes exact sense here. And what I'm aiming for is I want about a cup of this oil to make the salve. So I'm just gonna pour this off until I see about a cup left. That about a cup? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on this and we can reserve that for whenever we want to use it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make a salve out of calendula. And what you're going to do is you're ultimately going to be melting your ingredients in a double boiler, which I will show you. So we're gonna be putting everything into a glass jar. And this is just a recycled glass jar. You can see I took the label off of it. And I reserve it especially for salves. That's why I have it labeled on the lid. I don't like to put the label, this is a tip, I don't like to put the label on the jar because you're gonna be submerging it in water. The steam or the water might make the label come off. So just keep it on the lid and then you can put it back once the jar is dry and clean. 
but I reserve this just for salves because sometimes, you know, I use glass jars as well for melting things like candles that have sort of a similar concoction, but I add essential oils. And so you don't always want that in whatever salve you're making. So that is why I use a special jar. So I'm going to take the lid off of my jar and I'm gonna put it here and we're gonna add, the ratio for this is 211. I think of a 211 calendula, calendula salve and that is how I remember it. So it's going to be two parts of your calendula infused oil. It's also going to be one part of beeswax. And these are beeswax pellets, so you can see that. These are beeswax pellets. And the reason I choose the pellets over the blocks is that when they're in smaller pieces, they melt down quicker, easier. And if you had the block of beeswax, all you do is you just grate it up and you would get the same effect. But I happen to have the pellets because that's what I use to make candles out of. And so I just use those. The other one parter here is organic coconut oil. And the coconut oil, along with, now this, I know this is not part of the two-on-one thing, but this is totally optional, is shea butter. Um, you can use cocoa butter, you could use mango butter too, but both this and the coconut oil are going to be antibacterial, and they're really great at moisturizing your skin, so it's great for a salve that you're gonna be using on your skin. And, they are both completely optional in this. So if you wanted to, the most basic version of the salve would be just to use your oil and your beeswax. So don't stress if you don't have the coconut oil or the shea butter. So let's go ahead and just combine everything into my salve jar so we can get it melting. While I'm adding these ingredients to the jar, you know, I think something that is really important to develop is being able to create things that have medicinal qualities to them. So for example, doing something like a salve, knowing how to make ointments or tinctures can be really valuable. We have had the luxury of living in one of, in my opinion, is the easiest times in history. If you look back in history, things used to be quite difficult. And especially depending on the country you live in, you might really have it easy. And we are, you know, I live in the US, and so we are just used to always being able to buy whatever we need, even these days get it delivered to us. So talk about cushy. But, you know, we take that all for granted, and there might be a time when we won't be able to do that. And, you know, I think we might have seen recently where it's been difficult sometimes to get products for various reasons. And so you don't always want to have to rely on being able to go to the store whenever you need something. Another thing that I wanted to note here, all of my ingredients are now in my jar, is that we want to avoid water. Water is the enemy in this case here. I love water, I think it's very valuable, but here it's not something that's desirable because water is going to possibly make this mixture go rancid or allow mold to grow or bacteria to grow. So because we have no water in this mixture, it's going to be able to keep for much longer. So let's go ahead and get this onto our double boiler so it can all melt together. I have some water boiling in a small saucepan, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glass jar and place it inside. 
So it's been about five to seven minutes or so, and now everything's completely melted. And you wanna give this a stir. Don't use your nice silverware here because it's gonna be coated with wax. So I'm just using a clean bamboo skewer, something that I can stick in the compost when I'm done. So I'm gonna stir this up. And if you'll notice, I did end up adding a little bit more water to this because I noticed the beeswax was floating to the top and it wasn't melting as fast as I wanted it to. So I added a little bit more water and that seemed to do the trick enough that the beeswax layer was surrounded by water. So now that everything's melted, I'm just going to take this out and I'm going to blot this on an appropriately colored dish towel. Very calendula color today, I did not plan that. But again, water is the enemy, so we want to make sure that we take all the water elements out and that includes the water on the outside of this vessel when we pour it so let me just dry this off here and careful the jar is going to be hot so use another towel if you need to to handle it but up at the top it's hot where all the melted stuff is but up at the top I find it's cool enough to touch that I can just handle it so now we're ready to fill our tins okay so we're ready to pour I have our melted infusion here and you want to work kind of quickly because you don't want it to harden and you have to decide what you want to use for your containers depending on how big you want you can do smaller or larger than this whatever you think is going to suit your lifestyle and these are metal tins with lids on them in fact i'm going to take this one off in case i need it but this is a great time to use small recycled glass jars anything like that, as long as they're clean and sterilized, will work perfectly for this. And these are, from what I remember, four ounce tins. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill my tins. And you should smell this. It's, you smell the olive oil and it also smells a little sweet and fragrant because of the calendula. It's really, really wonderful. It's just such a pleasant, subtle smell. So you could add essential oils to this as well, but I just think this smell is so nice that it is fine all on its own. And I'd hate to have anything sort of overwhelm that calendula smell. All right, so we have our tins here. and we are just going to let them set. So it's been about an hour and these salves are now completely cool to the touch and they've turned opaque. And that's how you can tell that they are finally set up. So after that, you can go ahead and put on your lids. So now you know how to make a soothing tea, oil, and balm out of the versatile calendula flower. And if you enjoyed this video, I did another one on the healing properties of yarrow, which is another wonderful medicinal plant. So if you want to watch that, click on the video coming up here and I'll meet you over there. I'll see you all soon.